Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll get started. My name is Rihanna Williams. I'm the program manager for the MSN Marketing Analytics Program. And joining me for this session um, this evening is Dr. Ingrid Martin. Uh, she is going to be walking you through the program, giving you a little bit more specifics about the MSN Marketing Analytics degree program here at Cal State Long Beach. Um, and then I will be coming in at the end to discuss the admissions and application process. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I do want to just take this time some quick housekeeping. We are recording this session tonight. So if we can just ask you all to please keep your um, yourselves on mute until we get to the end. That just helps kind of block out any background noise and whatnot. Um, until we get to the end, then there will be obviously the opportunity for questions and answers. Um, we will be going ahead and, and answering all of the questions that you all may have um, us, by us recording the session this evening also gives the chance for us to send the recording to you all. Um, that way, in case you missed something or you forgot, uh, maybe, you know, a question that was covered during tonight's session, then you'd be able to go back and uh, just review the recording. Um, so with that being said, I will go ahead and I will turn it over to Dr. Martin, and I will be joining you all back here again shortly. Thank you, Rihanna. All right, so uh, my name is Ingrid Martin, and I am actually filling in for the faculty director of this program, Dr. Rio Song, because he's on sabbatical, so I'm filling in for him. Um, I'm actually work on the MBA side of, the, of our graduate programs, um, but I'm in the, also in the marketing department, and I was part of the group that put together this uh, degree, so, and we're really excited about it. It's, uh, it, it is sort of leading or cutting edge in terms of the kinds of uh, classes we have and the skills that we prepare you with to go out into the job market. So let's, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the background of the program and then talk about where we go and the potential of uh, to how it can help you in your career. All right, some of the critical trends that we see today. Um, first of all, to be successful in the market, we need to understand what these critical trends are that are shaping the way business is. There's so much technology out there in business. We see people using um, artificial intelligence. We see people uh, learning how to use Tableau, um, blockchain, all these different types of what we call disruptive technology. And that's part of what you get when you come into this program. You're learning about these important current trends in technology and linking that to what we call big data and or or the data revolution so keep in mind that data now which we get so much um, data from everywhere every time you're on the internet people are collecting data about you i know that we think oh no people don't know about us but everybody knows about everybody when you're on the internet and they're all collecting data whenever you use a qr code now you go into restaurants and you see it, people are restaurants are using qr codes because it allows them to be um so that there's touchless um uh, ordering and getting pa uh, payments for meals and all that. So all of this is data that is being collected. And so the way they call it now is this concept of data as your new currency for the information age. Um, one word that, um, that you see, can see here that you need on your resume today is digital. And that's Market Watch 2017 talks about this. And it's basically the idea of people understanding that digital is where we're going, we're here, and you need to understand what you can do with data to be successful. All right, so here's some pictures, which I think these are really cool. Um, the first one are all different kinds of examples of new technology. Some of it has already um, been integrated into our um, culture and our, our everyday lives, but other stuff hasn't. It's very new. And they're all around. This particular picture looks at all around, is all around autonomous vehicles. So delivery robots. So here you are in your... Um, a hotel room and you ordered room service and here comes a robot that delivers your room service. That, so that's a pretty cool thing. I don't know if they actually are using that yet, but it's, it's a technology that's out there. Then you can see the driverless cars, drones. Drones are really um, something that we see all the time. 
Um, and there's a lot of uh, regulations and everything that goes on in terms of drones and where you can use it and where you can't. And basically they're, they're another way that people are collecting information. But if you look at this particular drone, you can see that it's an Amazon drone. And what they're doing there, the idea is that instead of having a UPS truck or an Amazon van or whatever, come up to your doorstep and deliver, it's gonna be drones that are gonna do that. So the drones are gonna fly in and, and not, not, not virtually, or not actually drop, but deliver your products on your front doorstep. Or there's also technology there that looks at, um, it will allow, people can open up the trunk of their car, let's say if they're at work, open up the trunk of their car remotely and the drone can put the packages in the back of your car and then you can close your trunk. So this is the kind of technology we're seeing that's more and more um, putting us in a situation where everything is getting becoming so much easier to get and to do. All right, and then the next one looks at um, and Amazon is actually do, uh, doing this already. It's grocery stores. It's called, they're called Amazon Go. And I don't know if any of you have been in an Amazon Go um, grocery store, but basically it's a, it's a cashierless stores. And it's gone the next step. You know, you can walk into a lot of stores and um, now grocery stores and you can actually check out by yourself. So you can walk over to a machine, you scan the code and um, put, put it in your sack and you make sure that your sack's on this, um, what do you call this uh, uh, weight so that they know what you're putting into your um, uh, what do you call grocery sacks, that kind of stuff. And then you can check out that way with your credit card. This is the next step. This is the step that as you're walking down the aisles and you pick up something and you put it in your cart, it's automatically scanned. So this is the next technology in that kind of um, way of uh, sh grocery shopping. Um, another one is in terms of communication, artificial intelligence can translate different languages in real time. So if you look at the lower right hand corner of this slide, you can see a robot and a guy and they both have their screens and they're there talking to each other. It could be someone speaking in English and another person speaking in German and they can understand each other's. So that's, uh, that's another way that artificial intelligence is being used to move us closer to being able to have a universal communication. Then if you look at the slide next to it, those two slides on the lower in the middle and the lower left hand corner, um, one is a picture of skin cancer or types of skin cancer and artificial intelligence is used to identify which ones are cancerous and what stage of cancer they're in. And then the one next to it looks at uh, weeds and so they try and crops and what they're doing is this is the, they're able to that machine there is able to determine which of those plants there is a weed and they want to pull it out and get rid of it and which of them is a uh, a crop, that, a valuable crop that you want to keep. So then what happens is they'll spray the herbicide or, uh, on the weeds that need, they need to get rid of. And what that does is it allows uh, these machines to go in there and do it instead of people going in there and spraying. All right, so the next one is some other stuff that's going on that's really interesting too. And some of this technology, you've probably experienced it, others you may not have yet. Uh, marketers are using machine learning and AI and advertising and customer service. So basically when you walk into a store, if you look at the top left-hand corner here, you walk into the store and you can see that they've there's a, a frame there around the guy's head and it's fa facial recognition. And that facial recognition basically says, this is a guy, this is probably between the ages of 18 and 22, and these are the kinds of ads that they would be interested in seeing because this is what this target market wants. Okay, so they put they quickly that'll bring up these ads on these screens here. So really, as you're walking through, you're immediately seeing advertising of something that you may be interested in buying and purchasing. So um, that's a great way to really, it's called micro-targeting your messaging so that people can uh, get what they want and they can basically screen out all the other information that's out there because it's not useful to them. 
Also, um, the other thing is uh, that we see on the screen, if you look at those two circles that go down and then uh, it's called sentiment analysis, data sciences can, can take data from customer data and they can read that into and interpret it into customer sentiment. And then they can predict whether the customer is likely to leave the store or not. So um, it's, and it's all through facial recognition and then ha knowing what they're looking for. And so you can see in the bottom that you have everything from an angry face to a, a happy face. And the idea here is that you want to maximize the number of people that keep you in that happy face um, uh, situation. And so they, it's also showed in the, top right hand corner and then you get in the bottom uh, left hand corner it talks about customer churn and what customer churn basically means is how many times do you turn over uh, a customer in other words do you lose a customer and can you replace that customer with a new customer and then from a marketing perspective it's really important to be able to maintain the customers you have because every time you lose a customer and you have to acquire another customer to replace them it costs you a lot of money Okay, it's cheaper to keep customers happy than it is to lose a customer and have to bring new customers in. So that's the concept of all of this technology is being used together to ensure that you minimize the amount of what we call churn that happens at the end of the day. All right, so the next couple screens, we're gonna look at um, these uh, trends that we see, and this is coming out of Google Analytics. Um, Google has a ton of data, and so it's used to, we use it to interpret um, the impact that our marketing um, has on consumers and, and customers. So behind all these advances that we see, this is, big data. This is what we've been talking about. And big data then is used in what we call machine learning. Machine learning is a whole set of uh, predictions that you see that basically allow you to then forecast what is somebody going to do in the future. So in other words, as you collect data on somebody multiple times and they're, they're involved in certain actions, you can then, there's algorithms out there where you can actually predict what are they going to do next? And that's called artificial intelligence. So what you see here is that um, more and more people are getting interested in big data. And so what's happening is there, you're starting to see this trend going up and more and more people are going, uh, more and more people are needed with this kind of tech or uh, knowledge to go into these fields. So machine learning, you can see how fast it's growing. And then we look at the other one, business analytics. So let's see what's, is the next slide, you can see that upward trend. So this basically, what the reason we show you this three slides is because we want you to see there's a lot of jobs out there and knowing, having the skills to work with big data and do this kind of analysis and everything, this is where you're gonna see yourself um, when you graduate because there's such a demand for people that have these skills. So then the next one, how many jobs will be lost? Well, that's sort of the negative way to look at it, the downside to look at it. What we really should do is we really should look at what kind of jobs are gonna go away and what are, what, and the jobs that go away, how are we going to replace those? And what are the skills that people are gonna need to go into these new jobs? So you may have been working, let's say in, um, in marketing research and you sit there and you're doing uh, some modeling where you're looking at some data and trying to figure out what can you do, what kind of strategies can you develop? But then as you become, get into, for example, a program like this, where you learn how to work with big data, you learn how to model stuff, you learn how to use, develop machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now you're getting that training and you're moving away from the old way of doing marketing research and you're moving into this new way. And so what's happened is the jobs haven't gone away and now we don't have any jobs. What's happened is the jobs are now different. They're more skilled in terms of analytical jobs. All right, so then the other thing we see um, is that, uh, so the data science and business analytics, since they are a promising area, what you see is the job postings here. And this is from something called Burning Glass. 
um, and the McKinsey report put this out and you can see the job postings that have gone up. Burning Glass is a company that collects data on all of the different um, we call job announcements that are out there in newspapers, online, everywhere. They collect all that data and they put it into um, information that can be used by people and by companies. And so this basically tells you, you're looking at this, they started doing uh, collecting data on data scientist positions in January of 06. And you can see that around January 11th or January, 2011, it really jumped. And now you can see how it's gone up. And this is just as of January uh, 2015. And now we're in January 20th and it's continued that really um, steep growth. All right, next. So the master's at, M at um, in marketing analytics at Cal State Long Beach. So there's a couple things that I'm going to talk about and then, um, and I'm not going to, going to go into a lot of detail about this. And then if you want more information, we can talk about it at the end. The first thing I wanna, uh, wanna focus on is um, the, the, this program is designed to help you develop your analytical skills, which basically means if you have a big data set in front of you, what do you do with it? Okay. And if you have a problem you're trying to solve, like some sort of marketing problem, you want to figure out um, how likely is a customer to stick with you if you do X, Y, and Z, you need to be able to look at this data and say, okay, how am I going to answer that question? So that's really what you're doing with marketing analytics. You're taking your marketing expertise and you're taking the numbers that you have, the data that you have, and you're combining them to answer a question like that. Um, the second thing is, um, in this program, we're focused on marketing analytics, we're focusing on digital marketing, social media um, marketing, uh, marketing analytics. So you're getting a whole range of courses all around analytics and marketing. The other thing is it's a STEM designated program. For those of you that are um, international students, this means that you can get up to 36 months on an OPT. And that means you can stay here for up to three years rather than just the 12 months that you do in a non-STEM designated program. For those of you that are, are domestic students, this doesn't, this doesn't apply to you. Um, the other thing is um, we have a boot camp. So when you first come into the program that summer before you start your classes, um, you're going to take a boot camp. And in that boot camp, you're going to learn the basics of statistics. Um, hopefully, it's going to be statistics that you already knew and you're just brushing up on it. You're going to learn about machine learning. You're going to learn how to program in Python. And these are skills that are critical to be um, to do well in the program and to excel and be able to get a job in the analytics area of marketing. All right. So in terms of getting your marketing analytics uh, masters at CSUOB, some of the things we want to talk about. Um, we're, we are AACSB accredited, which basically means that out of about, I think there's I can't remember how many, there's uh, 18, 20,000 business schools around the world. There's only about 800 that are um, AACSB accredited. So this means that um, we go through a very strict and um, extensive uh, accreditation process to be part of this group of business schools. We're also in CEO Magazine, we're in their tier one global um, programs. Princeton Review has rated us as one of the top 385 best colleges. Forbes puts us down as best value. Um, Money Magazine has, we've also been rated in Money Magazine. So you can see there's been a lot of um, uh, accolades that we've received in terms of how well we do in our education and the graduate programs. And then just a little, um, then down at the bottom, and you'll get more information about this later, but basically the cost to go to the program full-time is about $20,000 a year for California residents. Um, for non-residents and international students, it's, a, it's right around 32,000. So um, that's important to keep in mind when you're making decisions on whether you're gonna come to school here or not, and how you're gonna fund your education. The one year program um, is great because you can pay, uh, you can do this very intense uh, curriculum 
and everybody does the same curriculum except if you do the full-time program you're going to go through in one year so as you can see you go through the boot camp then when that's over you start fall semester you, you start out with um, the basic marketing courses so you're going to have a marketing management course and then you're going to take a basic marketing research course and then after that you go into, you start into your analytics. So you can see starting with marketing analytics, then digital marketing, you go all the way through and then till the summer. And the summer you'll finish your last two analytics courses. You'll take a course in either new product development or business to business marketing. And then you have your capstone, which is the a culminating experience, which means you'll work on a project. So in one year, for $20,000, you can actually go through and walk away with this degree um, in marketing analytics. And the idea here is then you would work with our, or before this happens, you would be working with our career people to help prepare you for the job market. So by the time you get to this point in the summer of your, uh, that su at the end of the program, we, what, what our goal is to make sure that if you don't have a job in hand right now, that you do are able to get a job in, within the next three months. That's, that's what our goal is. If you want to go through at a slower pace, we have our part-time program. And you can see here, it's the same courses, but you're just taking fewer courses and it takes you approximately two years to do it. Um, people who are working usually take this uh, program slower because it's, it's, it's less intense as, it, as the full-time program. Keep in mind too that all of our classes are at night. So if you're working during the day, you're able to go through the program at night and take these classes at night. Okay, so with your MS in marketing analytics, what are you gonna do? So all sorts of doors can open for you. Okay, and as you saw, you, if you think back to the chart that I show you where you see all the job postings that have taken this huge, we call it a hockey stick curve. Um, if you think about a hockey stick, a hockey stick curve that goes up like that um, to show that there are lots of jobs out there and a big demand for people with these skills. So there's basically two paths you can take here. One path is going becoming a going into marketing management. And basically what that says is you have a traditional marketing undergraduate degree or marketing, you've been working in marketing, and now you want to become what um, is called have data literacy or be data literate. And you're going to take the skills, the analytical skills and the technical skills that you've learned in this program to solve marketing pro problems and develop marketing strategy. The other path is for people who really want to just stay in the analytics side of it. So what they want to do is they want to continue to work and focus on new technology that's out there and using data to create knowledge for companies to then use. So those are two paths that you can take different paths, although they all both of them require uh, an in depth knowledge of how to work with data. All right, so now I'm going to turn it over to Rihanna and what she's going to do, she's going to talk to you about the application process. And then in the end, um, I'll come back with Rihanna and we'll answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to cover the application and admissions process for the MS in Marketing Analytics degree program. Um, so over on the left hand side, these are some general application requirements, basic requirements um, in order to be considered for admissions into the MS Marketing Analytics degree program. Um, so we are looking for uh, applicants to maintain a bachelor's or have their bachelor's degree in marketing or business from a regionally accredited university. Um, typically, we do require the GMAT GRE exam. However, given the uncertainty with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, there's been many testing centers that have been closed. Um, and, and just, you know, with the un uncertainty going on with all of that, we are waiving the GMAT GRE requirement for the fall 2021 intake. Um, as part of the application process, you'll be uh, required to provide us with the current resume. Um, you'll also be preparing a video statement of purpose. There's a short, short writing prompt that you'll be responding to, as well as two letters of recommendation. Um, and I'll be going through each one of these in a little bit more detail in our further slides when I go through um, the Cal State Apply application process. 
Um, so the application process does begin on what's called Cal State Apply. That's our application system. Um, we started accepting applications back on October 1st of 2020. Um, so that's when our application window opened. Uh, the deadlines are quickly approaching. So in just a couple of weeks, our first deadline is March 1st, 2021. And that's going to be for any international applicants that are applying. Um, and then the final deadline is for domestic applicants. That application deadline is June 1st, 2021. Um, I do want to let everybody know that just because the application deadline is June 1st, 2021, doesn't mean you need to hold on to your application and all of your application um, documents and your transcripts until June 1st of 2021. Um, we do make admissions decisions on a rolling basis. So what that basically means is any applications that come in and all of the required application documents come in, um, we do make those decisions um, as they come in. Uh, there are four quadrants of the application process, or I'm sorry, of the application system. I'll go ahead and I will be walking you through each one of those four quadrants and explaining a little bit more of, about those in, in a little bit more detail. Um, once your application has been submitted to the university, you are required to submit official transcripts um, and test scores. As I mentioned, the GMAT GRE exam is waived. But we do re still require English language test scores for any international applicants that would be applying or even domestic applicants that are applying if you earned your undergraduate degree from outside of the US. Um, so once your application is submitted, you would be receiving an email, an official email from the university, and it would be providing you with next steps for forwarding your transcripts to the university, all of those official transcripts and test scores to the university. Okay, so once you log on to the Cal State Apply application uh, website, it looks like this. Um, so you would be selecting the term that you're applying for, which is fall 2021. Um, and then this is a graduate degree program, so you do, do need to select the right, um, the right level um, in terms of your application that you are apl applying for. This is a master's degree, so it is the graduate level uh, application that you would be starting. On the left hand side, um, it gives you some options to select. So the camp campus, you need to ensure that you are selecting the Cal State Long Beach campus. And um, again, you would have selected the fall 2021 term as well. Once you've selected the CSU LB campus, Cal State Long Beach campus and all available programs, it will then show you a list of all of the graduate degree programs that we offer here at Cal State Long Beach. Um, it is alphabetical order. So you would just need to go all the way down to the M section and you would select the M for marketing and MS marketing analytics degree. So once you have selected the program that you're gonna be applying and you've created your profile, um, this is what we call your dashboard, right? So this is where your application has then, it, it then begins. So there's four quadrants here. So um, there's gonna be a quadrant that's gonna contain your personal information, Another second quadrant that's going to be requesting your academic history information, supporting documents, and then finally the MS Marketing Analytics program materials that we're requesting from you. So on this dashboard, you will see um, each, each one of these sections. You would click on each one of these sections to then complete um, all of the questions contained within that portion. Um, so you can see of these four quadrants, three of the four are lit up in green, you'll know that you've answered all of the questions for each section contained within each of these quadrants. Once it's green and it looks like this, like these three circles, once it's green and it has a check mark, that's how you'll know you've um, answered all the questions and then you can then move on to the next quadrant. Um, so for the personal information, that's the first quadrant. Um, these are all of the questions contained within that quadrant. You'll be uh, required to read and agree to a release statement. There's some biographic information, your contact information that you'll be providing to us, um, and some other information that the university is looking for um, in order to apply to, um, to Cal State Long Beach. The second quadrant is going to require some academic history information from you. Um, there are three sections here. So there's a college's attended GPA entries and standardized tests. Um, of these three sections, you're actually only going to be filling out the first one, um, which is the college's attended. 
we do need you to list each of the um, colleges that you've attended in order to receive your degree from. Um, the GPA entries, once you get here, it will allow you to opt out. Um, so you would be opting out of the GPA entries. If you don't opt out of the section, it is going to require for you to list every single one of the classes that you've taken by university. Um, so you don't want to do that. <laughs> We're going to be requesting your transcripts, so we'll be able to see all of those classes and we'll be able to see the grades earned for those classes. So don't go ahead and, and fill this part out. You'll again, you'll be given the option to opt out of the GPA entries. Uh, the standardized tests, you can do the same here as well. As I mentioned, we are waiving the GMAT GRE exam, so you would be going ahead and you would be skipping this section. It lets you opt out of this section as well. So please do opt out of the standardized test section. Um, if you're an international applicant and you are uh, required to take the English language test, or if you um, are a, a citizen and attended uh, outside of the United States for your degree, um, and you're required to provide the English language test, uh, you'll not be you won't be providing that here um, you'll be submitting those test scores those official test scores to us so we again don't need you to enter any standardized test information here you will be given the option to opt out and please do so all right so the third and fourth quadrants um, also under supporting information there is going to be experiences that are listed here that you can type in or enter in experiences for. Um, this section also allows you to opt out and you will need to go ahead and opt out of the experiences section for the third quadrant. Um, in the fourth section, your program materials uh, quadrant, quadrant four, you'll be providing us with a resume. So we don't need you to list each and every single one of your experiences here under the third quadrant. Go ahead and opt out of that. And then you'll go ahead and you'll move on to the fourth quadrant for the program materials. And the program materials, once you click on that, will look like this. So there will be on the left hand side, you'll see the program that you're applying for, MS Marketing Analytics. There will be a home page here, and it's going to give you a description, a brief description about the MS and Marketing Analytics degree program. Um, then you're going to go over to the next tab, which is for the documents. And documents, that's going to be where you're going to be uploading your resume. So the document section is going to require for you to upload your resume there. Once you've uploaded your resume, there will be a green check mark. Um, so you'll know that you've satisfied the requirement of attaching your resume. Then for the next part, there's going to be the recommendations. We do require two letters of recommendation. As I, as I mentioned in the beginning, you'll, under the recommendations, you'll be providing us with the name and email address of both of your recommenders. So that will go here under the recommend, recommendations tab. Um, once you've entered in the name and the email addresses of your recommenders, you'll have a green check mark there. So that'll signify, you know, letting you know that you have um, successfully completed that part as well. And then the last part, questions. This is gonna be where, you, where you'll be providing us with your video statement of purpose, the link to your video statement of purpose, as well as responding to the, the short writing prompt. So for letters of recommendation, we typically get quite a few questions from people, from applicants um, wanting to know more about the letters of recommendation, what we're looking for, what's required. Um, so this is just some, some quick tips for you regarding the letters of recommendation. Um, you'll be providing the name and email addresses for both of your recommenders. Um, the recommenders can be academic, so meaning they can be professors that you either currently have if you're still completing a degree program um, or if you've recently graduated from a degree program, um, any one of your professors that you may have know, known um, that would be willing to write a lot of recommendation from, for you. And they, your recommenders can also be um, professionals, so anybody from your workplace that would be able to write a letter of recommendation for you. Um, they can be professional recommendations, um, or you can have one of each. If you have you know, a close professor or somebody willing in the, in, the academia, in the field of academia that is willing to write your um, letter that knows you well, um, or and, sorry, and um, somebody from the workplace, you can do that as well. It could be one of each. They can both be academic or they can both be um, pro professional references. Um, so we'll be out, we'll be looking for the recommender to provide us a summary of how they know you. 
Um, they'll also want to provide a few more um, descriptions of the contributions that you've made either to the workplace or in the classroom. Um, then they'll want to go ahead and give us some characteristics and why they believe that you would excel in your graduate studies here at Cross State Long Beach. And then, of course, lastly, a, str a strong closing statement um, endorsing you for the program and your candidacy to our degree here. Uh, so the video statement of purpose. For the video statement of purpose, you could use any video platform service, um, such as YouTube, it could be Vimeo, um, any video platform service that will be producing a link uh, to a video that you can then post or um, copy and paste into the application form. Um, so you'll be responding to this prompt um, through your resume and recommendations. We have a clear sense of your progression path to date. What are your career goals in the next three to five years? And what in your imagination would be your long-term dream, dream job? Um, so the video should be no more than three to five minutes in length. Just, you just want to make sure that you're clear and concise and professional as possible in the video and answer this question uh, to the point within that allotted time frame. So the short writing prompt is going to be it's just a very small paragraph, very, very short. Um, this is also going to require for you to respond to a prompt. And um, we're looking for you to describe a time when you've dealt with someone who was difficult. We want to know how you handled the situation and what you would do differently if you can do it all over again. Uh, so again, it's, it's just a very short response, um, only one paragraph long, so nothing too elaborate. You just want to get kind of a feel for your writing style and, um, and you know, ensure that you can answer the question. Um, so as I mentioned, once again, uh, the GMAT GRE test requirement is being waived for fall 2021 um, due to the testing center uh, closures. Um, all This is going to be for all applicants. So no matter what program that you're applying to um, in, in the graduate department here at Cal State Long Beach uh, for business, um, you're, we're waiving the, the test requirement for all of those programs. Um, a lot of people sometimes ask, are, once we're admitted, are we going to have to take the test at a later time? Um, and no, we're not looking for um, anybody to take that test at a later date. Okay, so some frequently asked questions and then we will get to the end here and answer any questions that you all have for us. Um, so I did mention at the beginning that we are looking for uh, applicants who have a bachelor's degree in business or marketing. Um, but if you don't have a degree in business or marketing, um, you are not automatically excluded um, from applying to the program. Um, what you would need to do is you are still expected to apply. Um, if you are accepted, if we do feel that you are a strong candidate uh, to be admitted to the program um, based on your transcripts and um, experience and um, other qualifying uh, factors that are required through the application process, um, then this just means that you would be required to take a prerequisite course. Um, and uh, the prerequisite course is our Marketing 500, Marketing Concepts class. This class is offered in the summer before classes begin in the fall. Um, so you would complete this course at CSULB um, and you ha would have to earn a B or better uh, in order to be then admitted and start the program in the fall here at Long Beach. Um, this class is online, so um, you would be able to take that class in the summer, once again, like I said, before starting your program in the fall. Um, like Dr. Martin did mention, classes in the MS Marketing Analytics program are in the evenings, so they're from 7 to 9.45 p.m., um, usually Monday through Friday, um, but there may be the possibility of having a Saturday class. Um, the tuition, again, $20,000 for full-time California residents, $32,000 for non-California or international students. Um, this is based on full-time. Um, so there is a link to the program costs. I can go ahead and I can um, copy and paste that into the, uh, into the chat so you can have access to that. It doesn't let me do that, but I'll do that at the, at the end here. From, it doesn't let me do it from the um, PowerPoint, but I'll, I'll copy and paste it into the chat. Um, so you can see a full breakdown uh, based on part-time status. Um, and do we require work experience? This program does not require work experience. 
Okay. So if you have any further questions, this is how you can um, reach us at a later time. Um, but now we are going to open it up to all of you for any questions that you all might have for us. So I have a question. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. so I'm an international student. So once I get admitted, so when does the college start? In the summer or in the fall? Um, the program starts in the fall. So we begin classes, um, I believe it's at the end of August, 24th or 25th. But there is a, um, a boot camp before that time. Um, the boot camp usually takes place about a week or two before the semester starts. Um, so you would be expected to um, be here and ready to go um, by early August. Yeah, because I'm, I'm already on OPT because I graduated from San Francisco State University. So I have to transfer. So that was the question because they only give like five month period before transferring to any other school. Um, we would encourage you to contact the International Admissions Office. Um, they would be able to give you a little bit more information about like the timeline um, and um, your meeting the, the status and in, in your requirement to make sure that you're not out of status. Um, if it does come up the end um, before that August date, um, it may be a possibility that you would have to go back to your home country. You would have to more than likely reapply for the um, for the the visa again, and then mm -hmm. um, re-enter the country. Um, but I don't I don't know for sure. I don't know your your circumstance, your specific circumstance. So I would encourage you to reach out to the admissions office, I've, the international admissions office. I've typed their email address into the chat. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, I saw online that you guys have, or that the web on the website, there's something called fast track applications. Yes, uh, fast track application is open to uh, current CSULB undergraduates. Oh, only CSULB. Okay, got it. Thank you. I had a really quick question um, in regards to the um, having to possibly take a prereq before the program starts. Um, specifically, I'm I'm coming from CSU uh, Chico, and I do have my degree in accounting, and it's like business administration accounting. Would that still be something that I would need to do the marketing 500 course? Um, it's usually up to the director would make the the determination um so probably dr martin or a dr song um but yeah awesome okay yeah. so have you have you had uh, marketing as an undergraduate no 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 i was just accounting but i did have to take some you know marketing courses for business administration like for generalization and stuff but you did take marketing i did yeah i have i have i've probably taken three marketing courses okay yeah so then you should be fine okay because it, it, this is basically, this is a requirement for, for students who have not had any marketing at all. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I've, I've definitely had marketing, so. Okay. Awesome. Cool, thank and, you. And I think you both mentioned um, whether we decide to go full-time or part-time, either way, all the classes are only in the evening, seven and 9.45, correct? Okay, thank you. Oh yes, um, so I am um, looking into doing the part-time program. So if say I do take only two classes per semester. So can, Rihanna, can you give us a sample of say like how the schedule will be? So there, two, both of those classes will be in the evening. So will it be like a Tuesday and a Thursday, something like that? It depends um, each semester. Yeah, so um, Dr. Martin went over the, um, the, the yeah. class schedule. So it looks something like this. I mean, we can't guarantee that it will be in your first semester. You will for sure have marketing, Alex. You will for sure have digital you know, marketing, social media. But it'll look similar to this. So you'll have two classes each semester. 
um, mm -hmm. including the summer as well. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on instructor availability. It could be a Monday, Tuesday class. It could be a Wednesday, Thursday class. Um, it, it really just depends on instructor availability and that would vary um, by semester to semester. So will it be like either one class per per course a week? Yes. yes. But it's not going to be like split in, you know, split in half, like, I mean, you know, two, no. two one hour classes per no. week. No, the only time that would happen would be in the summer. Um, and that would be because in the summer, it's not a traditional 16 week uh, semester, it's uh, 12, 12 weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So we have 12 weeks, it would be if you have a 12 week class, it would be once per week. But if it's um, a six week session where it's split in half, um, then you may have classes uh, twice per week. Um, during the six week sessions. But again, it's just it's just depending upon um, the instructor, their availability, and when they're able to teach. If they're able to teach the full 12 week class or the six the six week class. Session. Thank you. Um will you be posting this recording anywhere just because my it, I kept getting booted off and signing on. So I definitely missed when you guys discussed the boot camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, um, yeah, we recorded this session and so everybody um, that registered to attend this evening, whether they were um, signed in or not, they would be receiving a recording of this session. It'll also be posted on our, on our website as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hi, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, thank yes. you. Uh, so, um, Will the classes be held online or remotely in fall 2021 and spring um, 2022? Um, you know, we don't know at this time. It's still too early. Um, our chancellor's office has um, said that classes will be returning on campus in the fall. Um, this is a, an in-person program, so I can say that. Um, however, we still we still don't know yet what the what the situation is going to be come the fall. There's still a lot of a lot of things that are happening, right? So um, can't guarantee that we will for sure 100% be back on campus in fall for this program. Um, but mm -hmm. as soon as we know, if you're an applicant to the program and you're moving forward in the application process, as soon as we have information and we do know for sure. Um, if we're going to be back on campus um, for classes, then then we would be communicating that with everyone. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, Rihanna, I have another question. I don't know if I missed this when you were explaining about the four quad, the four quadrants in the application process. Um, under supporting information, um, it uh, do we have to have an experience or we can just upload a resume? On um, For the supporting information, you would be opting out of entering in any information here. Um, basically, the first three quadrants, all of that information is going directly to the university. So we don't have, we really don't have access to any of that information. Um, all the information that comes directly to our department is the program materials. So the program materials is where you would be uploading your resume and I that see. would be under documents. Okay, so I'll just ignore supporting information, correct? Yeah, it'll get you the option to opt out. So you'll want to make sure that you opt out of the supporting um, and then upload your resume where it's indicating you to do so under documents okay. for the program Thank um, you. materials page. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? No, thank you. All right. Well, again, this is our contact information here. Our 
um, email address and um, uh, there's a web form that you can fill out. If you all have any further questions, do feel free to reach out and ask us. Um, I will be sending the recording as well as the slide deck to everybody. Um, so you'll have access to all of the important links and um, information that we discussed here this evening. Um, but I would like to thank everybody for joining us and don't forget about the upcoming application deadlines. They are coming up pretty quick. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.